Hi folks, this is Checkpoint Quiz 1.8. I'm given the complete graph of y equals f of x below. And so I have these four key points. And then I'm asked to sketch the graph of g of x, which is some modification of the function f of x. Once I get the graph of g, I'm asked to find the usual information about it. So the key to this problem is to look at these key points and glean information about the function f from these points. And so I go over and I sort of reverse the process. Normally we make a table then plot points. So now what we're doing is from the points we're making the table. So the x values are 0, 2, 4, and 5. And the y values are the function values. So I know that 1 is f at 0 because the point 0, 1 is on the graph. I know that 3 is f at 2 because the point uh, 2, 3 is on the graph. I know that 2 is f of 4 because 4, 2 is on the graph. And I know that 0 is f of 5 because 5, 0 is on the graph. So, in other words, for the values 0, 2, 4, and 5, if those are the inputs to f, I know what the outputs are. So what I need to do is look at what's inside the function here, f, and set that equal to each of these inputs here. So that's what I'm going to do in this step. 1 minus x over 2 equals 0. 1 minus x over 2 equals 2. 1 minus x over 2 equals 4. And 1 minus x over 2 equals 5. So I'm setting what's inside the function equal to what's inside the original function here, 0, 2, 4, and 5. Now as I move through solving these equations, I'm going to use the same steps to solve each of these equations, and we'll just remark which transformation is happening in which order. Okay, so the first thing you would do to solve any of these equations is multiply both sides by 2 to wipe out the fraction. So on the left hand side, we get 1 minus x. And we multiply the right hand side by 2, I'm going to still get 0. In the next step, I get 1 minus x equals 2 times 2, which is 4. 1 minus x equals 2 times 4, which is 8. And 1 minus x equals 2 times 5, which is 10. So in this first step here, if you're keeping track, I multiplied all of the original x values by 2. So what we have is a horizontal scaling by a factor of 2. So that would be the same as saying a horizontal stretch or, or uh, expansion or dilation by a factor of 2. Okay, the next step to solve this equation would be to subtract 1 from each side. So I get 0 minus 1 is negative 1. 4 minus 1 is 3, 8 minus 1 is 7, 10 minus 1 is 9. So I took then each of these x coordinates and subtracted 1. That means I'm going to shift left one unit because I'm subtracting one from the x's. And the last step, I would multiply both sides by negative 1. So I get x equals 1, x equals negative 3, x equals negative 7, x equals negative 9. And multiplying an x-coordinate by negative 1 is a reflection across the y-axis. All right. So as far as the horizontal is concerned, um, I've done these three transformations. 
Now, these are the new inputs. These are the new x coordinates on the graph of g. So I'm going to plug each of these values for x into the formula I have for g. And if I've done everything correctly, when I simplify what's inside, I should get back to the, these original inputs to f. Okay, so now it's time to plug each of our new x values into the function g. So g of 1, by definition, is 3 minus f of 1 minus 1, all divided by 2. Which is 3 minus f of 1 minus 1 is 0, 0 divided by 2 is 0. Okay, so 3 minus f of 0. Sure enough, f of 0 is a, fu is a function value I know. f of 0 is 1, so I get 3 minus 1 equals 2. g of negative 3. By definition, it's 3 minus f of 1 minus negative 3, all divided by 2. So this is 3 minus f of... 1 minus negative 3 is positive 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And what's f of 2? Well, sure enough, that's a function value I know. That's 3. And 3 minus 3 is 0. Take g of negative 7. By definition, that's 3 minus f of 1 minus negative 7 divided by 2 which is 3 minus f of 1 minus negative 7 is 8. 8 over 2 is 4. 3 minus 4 is 2. And that's 1. Finally, x is negative 9. g of negative 9 equals 3 minus f of 1 minus negative 9 over 2. And what's 1 minus negative 9? positive 10. 10 over 2 is 5, and f of 5 is, once again, something I know, that's 3. Okay, so what do we get out of this? Well, first off, we can look at what transformations are happening to the old y values. For each of the old y values, I'm multiplying them by negative 1, which means I'm reflecting the thing across the x-axis. And then I'm adding 3 to it, which means I'm shifting it up 3. So that's the transformations that are happening here. I get the final input 2. So what does this tell me? What point's on the graph? Well, I plugged in 1 and got out 2. So 1, 2. So this first point, 0, 1, gets moved to the point 1, 2. The next point, I plugged in negative 3 and got out 0. Negative 3, 0. So that's where this point goes. Okay, the next point, I plugged in negative 7, I got out 1, negative 7, 1. And the last point, I plugged in negative 9 and got out 3, so it's negative 9, 3. So that's where these last two points went. All right, now the way I connected these points uh, is I went from, say this is A to B to C to D. So when I plot these points, I'm going to connect them. A to B to C to D in the same fashion as I connected things here, namely with straight line segments. So now we're ready to graph uh, Y equals G of X using these points and connecting them in that order. All right, here are the points on the graph of G. And then I'm going to connect uh, here to here to here to here using straight line segments. So let's see, uh, 1, 2, negative 3, 0, negative 7, 1, and nine, negative 9, 3. All right, that's all the grid points I'm going to need. 1, 2, negative 3, 0, negative 7 comma 1 and negative 9 comma 3 then I connect the, the dots with straight line segments 
the first point to the second point to the third point to the fourth point. All right, we'll go ahead and label these. Okay, so this is the graph y equals g of x.